Today we are at the London Taxi Company on Brewery Road where Jeff and I got to have a behind the scenes look of the black cab industry. We first met up with Will Barber who gave us a little tour around the premises. As well as the showroom, what else do you have housed in this building? Uh, so as well as this kind of main showroom floor, we've obviously we've got um, our parts and servicing team but also upstairs as well, Knowledge Point, which is one of the many kind of knowledge schools that uh, it, I guess take would-be cabbies through the, the knowledge and get them ready to pass their exams of TfL. You can see basically around you all the mopeds that the knowledge students actually use uh, to actually when they're actually learning. So they'll go out on the road, test some of the kind of runs that drivers have to learn as part of the, the kind of TfL kind of curriculum and which also have the kind of little, I guess, rests here so they can kind of mark their progress and kind of yeah. learn, learn the route as they go. We then went into the Knowledge School to speak to Peter Allen, a taxi driver as well as instructor, about the process of getting into the profession. Well, there's a map sort of beside us here which sort of shows a six mile radius from the very centre of London. The traditional centre of London is a roundabout called um, King Charles I Island, which is just south of Trafalgar Square. Although recent studies have proven that that is actually not the case anymore, it has moved a little bit sort of southeast. In order to give people a bit of an idea of how to get around this six mile radius in the most time efficient manner, we break it down into quarter of a mile segments. If you look at the red ones, they're the first time they go around the map. So that's the first 80 routes and places and areas uh, that they have to learn. And then what happens is the next 80 they go around again, next 80 after that again, next 80, and it all starts to join up. It's like a massive jigsaw puzzle. A little walk away was the call out room where people work in pairs, one as an examiner and the other as a student, to find the most direct route when asked to go to a specific location. The knowledge is sort of 50% knowledge and 50% psychology, you'll be happy yes, to know. Yeah. yeah, it really is. There's a lot of psychology involved in it, so you need to get yourself prepared for that yeah. moment. You supposedly have larger hippocampuses than the rest of the well, world. Well, yeah, uh, we don't like to put show off about our hippocampuses, <laughs> but they are particularly large. Yeah. Yes, yes, they are. Back downstairs, we met with Lorenzo Bulliari, who spoke to us about the accessibility of black cabs for those with disabilities. He showed us all the nifty systems that are installed in all cabs. There's the option to release the door to make way for a step that is stored in the boot. There is also the option to release the ramp, making it easier to roll in, and a mechanism is used to prevent the door from closing. Swivel seats also make it easier to get inside. Have you ever noticed the yellow markings? They are there to help the partially blind navigate more easily when in the cab. So after learning about cabs, I was given the opportunity to drive one. Except there was one problem. drive a London cab around the streets of London? Of course, yeah. Okay, actually, while I think about it, how old are you? Uh, you shouldn't ask a woman her age, but I might possibly be a bit too young. Okay, well you've got to be sort of 23 <laughs> to drive a cab, and I, to me you look a lot younger than yeah, that. Yeah, so I'm, I'm not there yet. We may have to look for someone Maybe older. Maybe like Jeff. Hello. Uh, do, do you want to drive? <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> so I get to drive a cab. So we swapped cameras. Can I uh, take you somewhere, sir? Uh, yeah. Hello, cabbie. Would you take me to the Victorian Albert Museum, please? The v What's the nearest tube station? I only go by tube station. No, uh, the V&A. The V&A. That would so be South Kent, wouldn't it? It would be South Kent. Yeah, so well I've got, done. I've got to drive from basically King's Cross to South Kent. Yep. In a taxi. In a taxi. Oh, my God. With a qualified <laughs> cab driver in the back. Jump in. <laughs> Peter and I hopped in the back and Jeff took the wheel. OK, cabbie. The meter's running. As a cab driver, this is all part of the knowledge. When someone jumps in and says to you, they want to go wherever they want to go in London. They don't want to see you start tapping in postcodes, addresses, etc. in a sat nav. They want you to be able to go. Instant reaction. So that's I'm what it's training for. a cab. For. You are. <laughs> I've always wondered what the back of one of these looks like. <laughs> well, I'm going to teach you a little cabbie cut through. When we get to the hang lights on, hang, here, on, hang on, a cabbie cut through. A cabbie cut through. I love okay? that phrase. So when we get to these lights, you're going to keep to your right hand side and you're going to turn right at these lights. I'm going to turn right here. So this avoids all the traffic around King's Cross. This is going to avoid a, quite a bit of traffic. And I'm actually not going to block the crossing. No, I'm good. Going to be considerate. <laughs> I see, you must be considerate. 
Am I staying in this lane? Yeah, stay in this lane. Yeah, that's we're that's no longer bus. following the bus, we're going to go past it now. Oh, are taxis allowed in bus lanes? Yes. Not every single one of them, red light. So how do, you, one, how do you know which, which bus lanes a black cab is, is allowed to drive into? Uh, normally a few weeks later when you get the £60 <laughs> fine for the door. You sort of find, and you never forget it after that. <laughs> do we do the underpass? Yeah, go for it. Oh, brilliant. I don't think I've ever driven the Euston underpass. So I stay in the bus stay lane? Stay in the bus lane. That's so weird to drive in a bus lane. That's really, that's genuinely a bit weird. Yeah, just make sure we've got your address in I, case we get I'm, fined. I'm programmed not to drive in bus lanes. I know, as a this driver. will be the one and only time. We arrived at the VNA and stopped by one of the classic cabby green huts for a much needed cup of tea, whilst Peter explained what they're for. These green huts are basically a cabby shelter, cabman shelter. They were initially um, uh, put, dotted all around London to stop cab drivers a long time ago, may I add, uh, in the days of the horse-drawn carts, um, finding shelter in pubs. A long time ago, the only place that anyone could find warmth, heat, and and uh, sustenance, and only cab drivers, yeah, are allowed to go inside them. Which is why you're all standing outside, freezing cold today. At the end of the day, we were still left wondering what makes a black cab so brilliant. The London cab is London. You know, people think about coming to London. They think of Big Ben. They think of black taxis and they think of the, the black taxi driver. It's part of people's holiday when they come to London to get into a black cab, sit in the back and experience the, uh, the cab driver, the London cab experience. I go on holiday anywhere in the world and I speak to doctors, people from all walks of life and when you tell them that you're a black cab driver they're instantly fascinated that you're a London cabbie and want to know all about the process. And that's what makes, being a, that's what makes me so proud to be a London cab driver.